Today we're going to be doing an oil change in a 2021 Explorer or Ford Explorer ST. So this is the um, the one that has the twin turbo EcoBoost engine in it. It's quite a performance machine. So uh, let's go through um, what we need to do this job. All right. So what you'll need to do this job, um, you'll need six quarts of um, 530 weight synthetic oil. Um, I always go with the Motorcraft. In fairness, when you read the spec that Ford provides, technically um, you can use a synthetic blend, but I, I just feel like with an engine like this that's got a twin turbo, a lot of compression, high performance, I would just go with the full synthetic. And nice thing is, is if you you know ever have a problem and you want to get the warranty on the car, if you produce the receipts for the Motorcraft product, um, you're not going to get any trouble from the Ford dealer. So certainly you could go out and get uh, Mobile One and some other oils, but I just go with the um, Ford stuff uh, because it's just for the sake of the warranty. And then the, it is a cartridge oil filter. So you'll need FL2062A, um, and that's the filter that goes in this one. And then some tools. So um, for, let's just start here. So if it's like every other Ford cartridge filter that, I, that I've dealt with, uh, with all the new models, it's really hard to get the cartridge filter out. So a pair of uh, pliers like this to help pull the, the cartridge, you know, the filter out of it is great. Um, you don't need this. I was just, uh, I got this wrench out. So to get the cartridge um, for the oil filter off, I did a measurement um, just to see what size socket I needed. So you see here, it's either going to be a 27 millimeter or a 1 and a 1 16th so, uh, socket. So I, I have, I don't have a 27 millimeter socket, but I do have this 1 and 1 16th socket. So I went with that. And then you'll need obviously a ratchet and the, where that filter is, it's a little hard to get at. So I would highly recommend if you can, I'm sure you can make it work. It just would be a little, it's a little bit of a tight space. If you have one of these wrenches, you know, ratchets that is flexible so that you can bend, that's how I'm planning on getting that cartridge off more easily. Then you're gonna have to remove some panels underneath the car. So a seven millimeter socket here. You're gonna have to pull some push pins out. So that's where I'm using um, this uh, gasket puller. And then obviously just a convenience item for me, uh, electric ratchet. Obviously you don't have to have that. You can totally take all the stuff underneath off by with a regular ratchet and that'd be just fine. So, and then the usual, you need a pan to drain the oil into and a funnel. So the first thing we're gonna do is get that uh, panel off the bottom. So let me show you how that's done. One item that I forgot to mention, you will also need a set of ramps so that you can drive the car up onto it so you can get underneath. So. Okay, so I'm underneath the car now, and to get to the drain plug, you have to remove this fabric splash guard. And so to do that, there are two round push pins like this, one on each side. There are seven millimeter bolts, one in the back here, and then one on each side. And then there also be um, a seven millimeter bolt um, here on each side here in the front, as well as this, uh, Oops, sorry. As well as this push pin here on the front. So those have to come out and then there are these square push pins and that'll have to come out too. And they're all captive, meaning that they don't come all the way out. Although if you pull them all the way out, you just push them back in. It's no big deal. I'll probably make that mistake trying to do this one-handed. But basically what I'll do is I'll take my gasket puller here and I'll work it underneath the pin and then get it all the way out. So that's why I use that. And so, and then I'll show you this other type and then I'll probably just do the other ones off camera so I don't bore you so much, but kind of just work them out. And I really love the gasket puller for that. So that's now free and do the push pins first so that you don't have this panel falling down on you um, while you're trying to work these out because they're the most difficult part. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of those uh, fasteners out and then I'll show you, I'll show you the bolts next. Okay, so all the push pins are loose now. So, and I did that on, see that one there. And then 
there and then there. So now we're going to go after these uh, bolts. So this is where I love having the rat air ratchet or electric ratchet, whatever you got. Just makes it a little easier when you're underneath these things, especially if you don't have a lift. But let's go ahead and get these off. And so I'll just go ahead and do that for the remaining ones and we'll pull this uh, pan up or this, um, sorry, splash guard up. Okay, so I got the, um, I got the splash guard out here. And so just so you can see, I did end up this front push pin here. Or I ended up just taking it out so I could slide this off. So no big deal there. But the remaining ones are all still in the, in the guard here. So um, that's kind of how that works. And it came out pretty easy. So next, uh, let's work on getting the drain plug loose. Okay, so I'm underneath the car again. And this is the oil drain plug. So if you're familiar with the um, F-150, this is the same style drain plug. And it's plastic. Um, and if you do it wrong, you can break it. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't, I would never uh, discourage you from having an extra one on hand just in case because obviously you break this you can't put it back in and then you're stuck with not being able to drive the car however um, I'm gonna do my best to show you what I do other people may have different opinions I totally get that um, but this has been my approach so you take the pick tool here and then if you can just get it over this lip oh sorry you take the pick tool here if you can just get it over this lip and there is a lip on both sides, then you can twist this off. I don't think I'm, I'm gonna do that part off camera because I'll need two hands, but that's how I do it. And then you should be over that. Have the pan ready because this can come out on you and then you got oil everywhere. So let me go ahead and see if I can at least uh, do that part with two hands and I can show you then the oil coming out. I probably should have mentioned this. Technically, this is a, a part that is supposed to get replaced with each oil change. There's an O-ring in there. They'll wear out over time. Um, the way I work with it is, because I hate just throwing something like this out every time I do an oil change. So that's why I was saying earlier, I keep one on hand. If you break it, then you can't reuse it. Or if the O-ring looks bad, you can't reuse it, but then you have your spare one on hand. But it, you know, and just be patient. It's hard. I got my, I got my little pick underneath and I kind of twisted it and then this side was up. Then I got my pick on the top, twisted it, got that side off. Just be patient. You know, this is all kind of plastic or polymer, whatever you want to call it. And so you don't want to break, scratch, or wreck anything, but just take your time, be patient. And so now I'm going to get that oil pan where I need it. And we're just going to go ahead and take this off. And yes, the oil will come out with some force. Having a sheet underneath is a good thing. I can do it with one hand. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right, so oil's coming out. So we'll go ahead and let that drain out, and then we can talk about what to do next. Okay, so I'm on the top. Uh, I'm on the top now in the engine bay. So right here, this is your cartridge filter. So. Now, the problem is, is you have this kind of sway bar here. Um, and so what you're gonna, what you're gonna have to do, or what I'm gonna do, and I'll probably need two hands, is I'm gonna take my wrench that can pivot here, and I'm gonna go ahead and use that, but I'm gonna need two hands that's on there tight. Um, the other thing I should mention is, it's always good with these cartridge filters to take a cloth and just clean around there so we don't put any dirt in there as we take it apart. So. I'm gonna get it loose and I'll show you taking it off after I break it loose because I'm gonna need two hands. So amazingly, I was able to do it with one hand. It wasn't, this one luckily wasn't put on there too tight. So just go ahead and ratchet it off. Obviously it's plastic, so it shouldn't be on there that tight, but it never seems to stop mechanics from doing that. And you definitely don't wanna crack this. So you can see it's coming off. It's just gonna take a little bit at a time. So. I'll go ahead and do the rest off camera, but you can see it goes and just be patient and work it. Okay, so I just, uh, it's now effectively 
Sorry, I get the focus there. So it's now effectively out. I can lift it out. And so I'm going to do that. And it looks like the filter stayed behind. So that's okay. We'll go pull that out. So, um, and here's the cartridge. So I'm going to set this down and let's go get the filter. So I was trying to avoid spilling any oil underneath the hood. So um, I, anyway, I just grabbed this and I had the paper towel ready. So you, it just, it pulls out. Just uh, if it, you know, if it's stuck in there a little bit, just wiggle it, but it'll pull right out. And here's your oil filter. So, and you know, with these kind of filters, you can always, if you want to, look in here for any metal debris. But realistically speaking, um, you know, there shouldn't be any in there. Um, so, all right. And especially this is a newer car, so I wouldn't expect that. So now at this point, um, the next thing we're going to do is get the new, so here's the, here's the card, you know, here's the cartridge part of everything. And you can see how like that O-ring has just a little, oops, sorry about that. That O-ring has just, you know, you can see there's some, some bits and some wear. So we're going to go ahead and pull off these two O-rings. So let's go ahead and, um, uh, and in the box comes, uh, a new one for the front part here. Oops, sorry and then these two so let's get to work on getting those swapped out okay so i've got this out or i've got the gaskets off the top one is rather is rather tough but i would just say you know get the gasket pick under there and just kind of got to pry it off the top so now you can see there's all these like paint flakes from whatever coloring so we don't want to get any of that in there so now i'm going to clean off this entire cartridge filter so that, that doesn't become an issue okay so um, it, it takes a bit of doing, so I cleaned it off, got all the paint chunks off, cleaned things up. Then you have to put oil on these O-rings. One, it helps prevent them from being damaged while they're going on. And then two, uh, when you put them on, and then when you're actually reinstalling the cartridge here, it'll help as well. So, because uh, you don't want these to get bound up and tear, and then you got a problem uh, for sure. So I got a little bit of thin bead of oil on them. Um, these go on easy, Put just roll the first one on, then roll the second one on after the first one. This guy here is a bit tough, so I've got a pretty heavy duty pick. If you can get your hands on a pick, you know, a pick that's this heavy, that was great, but basically, you know, you're gonna want a gasket pick, you're gonna wanna basically hold with one hand, kind of the, the O-ring there, and then lift it over with the gasket pick and it'll go on. So just be aware that's a little bit challenging. And then the only other thing is, is I went um, to the engine compartment and just where the, the filter sits, um, I cleaned up any oil that was in there. Um, I, I don't think it's totally necessary, but it's just nice to do. So at this point now, um, we can put this back in the car. So I'm gonna put the cartridge filter in and I'm gonna go ahead and walk this over to the car and we'll thread it in. Okay, so we're back at the car. So um, I cleaned up down in there um, just cleaned up any loose oil so now i'm gonna put the filter in because it doesn't stick in the cartridge like i thought it might so we'll just get that guy in there so i'm not fighting it and um it just it feels like it press fits on there yep that's good so now just go ahead and take our cartridge put it on and then just basically you're going to probably hand thread this for quite a ways until those gaskets catch. I might need, there we go. Helps if you actually uh, get it in there. Okay, it's hard to do this on the phone sometimes because I'm watching the phone and not what I'm doing. So at this point now I'll go get my, oh, it's still going. Okay, so now I'm just going to seat it with my ratchet, make sure it's on tight, and um, then we'll go ahead and put the drain plug back in. Okay, so I'm just tightening this down. Okay, so now at this point, probably all I'm going to do is get the wrench there, is just give it a shouldn't need to put this on very tight so that's about all the force I'm putting on it um, those o-rings are going to do their job and there's no reason this should come out so that's in tight so let's go ahead and put the drain plug back in also this is why where if you have the wrench that you can um, pivot here it really helps so that 
um, you can get in there a little easier. Okay, so we're back under the car and oil is dripped out. So here's the drain plug. Now, if you're using a new, if you've got a new drain plug, just make sure you put some oil on that O-ring. And then, you know, forgive me because I'm going to fumble with this, but you want to just kind of push it in there. And it should seed and eventually lock in. Okay, so yeah, just push it in and then twist and eventually it'll engage and it'll snap there. Sorry, I probably didn't get the best camera angle. So now I'm just gonna clean up the oil and let's go ahead and fill this thing with the oil. All right, so this is where you fill the, the, fill the oil. So you just pull this cap out, set it off to the side and let's put a funnel in there. This is enough on an angle that I'm gonna go ahead and use two hands um, so I can guide it in. Um, if you have an angled funnel, that's better, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour in uh, five and a half quarts. Then I'm gonna check it and based on where it's at, I'll take it up to the top level and then I'll run it and then I'll recheck. So let's go ahead and get five and a half quarts in there. Okay, so I've got uh, five and a half quarts of oil in. Um, I checked the level, that's the dipstick. Um, it's right about halfway, but um, obviously the car is on an angle because I had to drive it up on ramps to get underneath it. So before you put anything else back, meaning get underneath the car and put that uh, uh, splash guard on, now what I'll do is I'll get in the car and I'll run it for a minute and then I'll check for any oil leaks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll walk through checking for oil leaks. Okay, so I just ran the car for a few minutes. Um, no oil light, which is always a good sign. And then um, you just want to, you can see this one pretty well, but with a cartridge filter, I'll just run my hand around it. And uh, you can see there, no oil. So we know that that's sealed up pretty good. And then you can look on the top, but you're not going to see much in this engine. So let's go underneath and check for any oil leaks there. Okay, so I'm underneath the car. And so the last thing I'll do is just kind of check around the drain plug here. Um, I'm not really seeing anything. So that gasket's doing it, the job of sealing it. Obviously you wanna clean all this off after you install it, cause there'll be a little bit of oil there, throw, throw you off, but I, I don't, and then, you know, you can always look around, <laughs> it's a pretty new car, so I wouldn't expect like a leak from the oil pan, but you, know, you can go around, check to see if there's any oil leaks, anything like that. And so now at this point, um, I'm go ahead and put the cover back on. And so let me do that and I'll walk you through what I did. Okay, so I'm back under the car and I slid this panel or the splash guard back in. And then what I did was I just pushed in all the push pins, which um, holds, sorry, which holds uh, this into place. And so now the only thing I need to do is put the bolts back in. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and hand thread, get them started. And I'll do that for each, and then I'll go ahead and get my electric ratchet, and I'll just go ahead and put them in. So let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you how to reset the oil gauge. Okay, so we've got all the, the bolts in. You don't have to put them on too tight, because that'll just cause problems. But uh, once they're all in, uh, the only thing left to do is get this thing level so we can check the key check the actual final oil level and reset the oil um, life gauge. All right, so um, I got the car level and um, we checked for oil leaks previously, but then obviously put the cover on. So um, went ahead and um, checked the oil level. It definitely needed all six quarts. I got all six quarts in there. And so oil level is good. Um, at this point, only thing left to do is reset the oil light. So I'll show, or oil life, I should say, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so um, often forgotten step, which is to reset the oil life. So I'm in the, inside the car, I've got it running. So you press the menu button and it'll bring up this menu. And this one happens to already be on settings, but it'll have selects, it has, you, it may not be on there. You can see it has the other screens. So just uh, move the, okay this okay button up or down to navigate to it so i'm going to go to settings and once you get on the one you want press the okay button and you can see right at the top is oil life so press okay again and um, now you just press and hold okay and now if i click on oil life again it'll show 100 percent so that's how you change the oil in a 2021 
a Ford Explorer ST. As always, I appreciate you watching. And if you would, uh, please uh, comment, like, and subscribe below. Thank you.